live from Nice, France, it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference 2017 Europe, brought to you by Nutanix. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and here with SiliconANGLE Media's exclusive coverage of theCUBE, live from Nutanix.next conference here in Nice, France. It's the fifth Nutanix conference. The Cube has been had the pleasure of broadcasting from all five of them. It's the second annual European show. Uh, over 2,200 in attendance here. Uh, we're in the uh, Acropolis, uh, which is a little ironic because, of course, uh, Acropolis is one of the product names of Nutanix. To help me with the introduction today, uh, happy to have uh, Martin Veitch, uh, Veitch sorry, uh, is uh, a contributing editor of IDG Connect. Uh, Martin, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. All right, so uh, you know Nutanix. It's a year after they IPO'd. Uh, you know, I, I've been tracking them since they were a very small yeah. company. I think a friend of mine was somewhere between the number twenty and thirty employee in there. They now have twenty eight hundred employees worldwide. Talked about uh, they have you know thousands of S Nutanix certified uh, you know people uh, just in Europe alone between uh, the employees, the partners, and, and the customers. Uh, you know, wh wh what's the vibe been for you so much? Uh, tell tell us. Uh, you know, but bring us in for the Nutanix show. Yeah, I, like you, I followed them from pretty much the early days. I always thought they were hot to trot. You know, they were an exciting company back in the day. The narrative made a lot of sense. They looked like they were a company very capable of executing. Uh, they seem to have great management. And what, what, what really surprises me is, if anything, you know, in this business we have a habit of, you know, overdoing it and praising these people to the skies and saying this is the next big thing, next big thing. I think these guys really undersell themselves sometimes. Uh, to me, you know, the Goldman Sachs line that Diraj Pandey, the CEO, uh, used earlier on when he was talking about uh, uh, the Goldman Sachs comment that it was a once in a decade uh, opportunity. Uh, to me, the company they remind me of a lot these days is VMware. I think, you know, that's the company they're going to uh, work with, go up against, and, and they remind me a lot of that infrastructure revolution kind of play, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and I think N Nutanix yeah. would like that analogy because number one, so. uh, <laughs> they, they uh, I love the line, they did a little song at the intro with a Yeah, the, that the was pretty wacky, everything. wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it they, they're having a little fun, they've got a fun culture. Diraj always says they try to be humble. Uh -huh. um, from a marketing, from a sales, sometimes a little aggressive, but uh -huh. you need that to kind of break in uh, to the enterprise space. But they said, uh, in the song, they said, uh, we used to sell boxes, now it's all about the software you know. Uh, you know, so uh, the, 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 what they've been pounding on is it's, it's one OS, you you know, one click, any cloud. So mm. the question I've been asking at, at all of these events that I go to this year is, when you talk to customers, it's a choose your pick, hybrid or multi-cloud world, yeah. um, but how do you live in that environment? You, you're absolutely, you know, customers, they doing lots of SaaS, they're doing Amazon, they're d doing things with Microsoft or Google, yeah. um, and if you just live in the data center, uh, you're limiting uh, where, where you're going to play. Sure. If, if you're just, uh, you know, the public cloud is uh, yeah. obviously lots of growth. Uh, Nutanix uh, is trying to fit in all these other environments. Uh, as I said, many people, when they first saw them, was like, oh, uh -huh. well they sell you an appliance that goes yep. in your data center. Um, that's not all that interesting. Mm -hmm. They position themselves as enterprise cloud. W w what do you take? The message, you know, they said, you know, hyperconverged was kind of the baseline, but I, I don't think I even heard that word I, uh, I was going to say the same morning, thing. It's now cloud. So. Yeah, enterprise cloud, which isn't a tag I'm particularly fond of, I must <laughs> admit. But you can see what the appeal is, right? I mean, people are going to build these. Uh, they're going to have these um, data centers on premise. They're going to have private clouds. They're going to have public clouds. They're going to go for data center co-location. And what you really need is a layer, a management layer that sits over that. So I think what they're building is something analogous to the systems management frameworks that we saw back in the day for the multi-cloud era, a and really. That adds such a, another uh, arrow to the quiver, uh, and and that's why I say you know you, you look at the stock price and so on, and, and you kind of wonder whether the the underpriced in a way you know, or or, or whether people realize quite what the power uh, they potentially yield is. You know, obviously they're going to go up against some of the world's largest organizations, but I think it's going to be an extraordinarily uh, ambitious and bullish play. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, it's a really fascinating uh, story. Yeah, well, uh, top line revenue, Nutanix mm -hmm. now uh, sitting right around a billion dollars uh, on, on uh -huh. an annual basis, and from a market cap, talk about the stocks undervalued, they're still over four billion dollars uh -huh. in revenue, uh, kind of a, you know, if you look at a similar compare company that, uh, you know, pure storage, uh, Nutanix uh -huh. now has about the same revenue, but, you know, higher market uh -huh. uh, market cap. So, you know, they, they, they're doing okay, but uh, 
as, as they are trying to emphasize, and I, I think your point, and I would agree with you, it, it is early still. This is not the, the final uh, Nutanix. Uh, the, the cloud play at the DC show uh, made a big announcement with Google, yeah. um, and starting to see some of that come to fruition uh, I, I here at the show, uh, and a big push of theirs is their Calm. Uh, Calm really is that layer that's yeah. going to live in the multi-cloud. Um, it's still, most customers haven't touched it or mm -hmm. really seen more than kind of some slides and demo. I did talk to a couple of customers already that have mm -hmm. used it, and at least the early customers, uh, of course, heavily involved. It's, it's a little bit self-selecting when you come to an event mm -hmm. like this, uh, but excited about how that is, you know, can be uh, that layer that spans uh, between uh, the, the, you know, my, my various environments, uh -huh. whether that be my core, uh, the public cloud, or potentially even the edge. They, they did an example uh, in the keynote of uh, an oil and gas going out yeah. to the rigs. Uh, so, you know, you think the Nutanix, uh, you know, if we, we look two years from now, when I think multi-cloud, is Nutanix a, a company that comes to mind? Uh, absolutely, I, I, I've just thought of this, so tell me if you like it or not, but they've kind of gone from stack to pack, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> hyperconvergence was the play where you would conflate uh, compute, networking, storage, et cetera. Uh, and really this, this combination of Prism, Acropolis, and Calm, is a whole other level, and, and, and you know, again, they didn't really hammer it with the audience today, but they're moving to also a very much a software-centric view of the world, you know, and that was always the question that people like me would ask of them, hey, why do you bother having the appliances, why do you have the hardware sell when, you know, software I I is the high, uh, the high margin kind of business in technology, and software is eating the world, as Mark Andreessen said, and, and now I think they're really pivoting towards being a very much a software-centric company and, and flying the flag for that, you know, and I, and I think that, that whole combination of, of, of management layers, of virtualization, of, of orchestration that they have, is exactly what the sweet spot is uh, in, in the future of enterprise software management. Yeah, I, I've heard uh, some companies talk about the new stack, and you, you took their products in PAC. Do you see what uh, I did? I, I, yeah. I, I, I do. <laughs> I, I think maybe uh, the marketing organization, uh, you know, give you a call uh, to, to see if they can leverage that. Five hundred bucks. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, we've got two days of the show coming on here. Uh, Absolutely, the kind of cloud story is one that I'm looking to tease apart and mm -hmm. talk to the customers. Uh, as I said, already had a chance to talk to some customers, and it, it's very much a spectrum. You talk to some customers, especially here in Europe, you go to Germany, and it's like, well, you know, governance, regulation, yeah. you know, public cloud might not be something that they can do because we have to dig into yeah. it, um, as opposed to uh, the, there's a customer giving a, a presentation today mm. uh, that very much, they said, everything was going to be public cloud, mm -hmm. um, but they found even when they tried to put everything either in SaaS uh, or like infrastructure as a service with Amazon, there were certain things that, oh well, in certain countries I just don't have the networking or it was going to be too expensive, yeah. so I need to put something in my own data center and that's where Nutanix have been a fit for them. So it's that good story, yeah. as I said, where's the center and Nutanix, being a software play, it's not about, oh, I have to sell you know, thousands boxes. and millions of boxes. Mm -hmm. um, and even, I've, I've read financial reports that mm -hmm. there's been hints from Nutanix uh, that you said, why do they offer the appliances? Well, maybe in the future they won't. It, mm -hmm. it will be through a partner and they'll do that. You need to qualify it, mm -hmm. but um, you know, absolutely position themselves. Uh, they are uh, the you know, enterprise you know, uh, software company is what they want to play. Infrastructure yeah. is a piece of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right, Stu. I mean, you, we've both been around the blog a few times when I started writing about this business, people used to say, well, mainframes, you know, they're the dinosaurs are about to fall off the edge of a cliff. You know, people are still buying a lot of mainframes now. You look at IBM's revenue sheet, a lot of that's mainframe centric. So I think you're absolutely right. People are going to persist uh, putting uh, stuff close to the vest in internal data centers, and they're going to selectively source in, in various different types of cloud. And you're right, governance is a big one. Over here in Europe, you know, GDPR, is the thing that scares uh, all the CIOs and CEOs, for that matter, witless, you know. So they're all terrified of that one, PSD2 and payments. You know, so when you have these regulatory uh, landscapes, you know, there's a tendency to be very cautious, very calm, and keep it behind the firewall. A and you know, I think probably as long as I live, uh, God willing, you know, uh, we're going to see this combination of deployment models. Yeah, GDPR absolutely uh, uh -huh. uh, something we're going to be talking about. Uh, Nutanix actually has a couple of experts here talking to Good. customers uh, as to how they play into it because that's that's a question I, I, I've I've had for Nutanix is. 
okay, <laughs> they have kind of their core focus, but as they start to go in adjacencies, you know, we see companies all the time, all right, I reach a certain level, and then how do I get a little bit further, and how do I have a reason to play into those environments? Uh, the, you know, Nutanix has a push into IoT. Nutanix's yeah. not the first company that yeah. I think of. It, you know, they're, they don't make sensors, they're not a GE, even, you know, Hitachi Vantara yeah. has arms that, that play there, so, uh, you know, Satya Vagani, they've got a small team uh, working on that, so you want a company of Nutanix size, uh, to start right poking out, but where will they be successful and where will they gain traction? Um, anything catching your eye or interest from Nutanix as they go kind of beyond, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the core uh, kind of infrastructure stack? I think it's our management layer. You know, very similar, I guess, VMware. You know, VMware initially was known for the hypervisor, and then later on they were really tooling around that to become the, the control pane, you know, the command center of the data center. That's where I see them. You know, it, frankly, uh, Stu, I, I'd be pretty worried if, if they'd made a lot of noise on, I don't know, virtual reality, augmented reality, internet of things, you know. I think they, to a certain extent, companies still have to stick to their knitting. And this is, I, I, is a company that's very much geared around being the, the 21st century uh, data center uh, nexus. Uh, and and for me, that's where the real value is, and that is a multi, multi, multi uh, billion dollar uh, segment in its own right. Yeah, uh, big question I have this week is always is you know what are the relationships that are going to help Nutanix you know move further? Yeah. One that we always look at is the Dell relationship. Dell's their largest sure. partner, but also their largest competitor between the, the VX Rail that they're doing, all the vSAN pieces. Um, interest to see uh, IBM Bob on stage. Yeah. The power announcement is one that I don't think a lot of people yeah. really understand how that fits. Uh, you know, Bob Picciano was talking about uh, you know AI and all of those pieces. Of course, uh, you know Lenovo, uh, another hardware partner. So you know, what are the partners that are going to drive them? Which are the you know what's the headwinds? What are the tailwinds that they go? Anything e from the partner standpoint that you're looking into? Well, one of the ways you know, I guess we all try to judge companies is by the company they keep. Yes, a and they've got some nice partners. As you, as you say, it's a complicated one. There's a lot of co-optation and frenemy type stuff going on. It's a bit like a Game of Thrones type complexity of scenario there. You know, yeah. Do behind the scenes. Is Dell telling its sales guys to sell this rather than this? And what do they do uh, to objection handling? And are they going to eventually try and stitch up Nutanix? I don't know. I think my, my feeling is now companies are mature enough that if they can get significant revenues and, and please the customer, then that's probably the way to go. And, and, and you know, uh, those are big, big names. And those are companies that you might think would have a history of wanting to do their own thing and go their own way, but no, then they're not. They're going with Nutanix because you know, it, 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 it adds a USP, adds some unique selling point, and, and, and it's a high quality product, and, and the customers are very happy. Very high net promoter score, which was an interesting little aspect, you know, 90 plus yeah. year after year, clocking it up. You speak to the customers here, they're, they're a happy crowd. You know, you can't say that at every uh, enterprise <laughs> IT conference, I promise you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's the, you know, the channel partners and the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, every single one of these events I've come to, as one's a little bit self-selecting, but the, the, sure. the people are super excited, uh, digging into it. All right, Martin, want to give you the fi fi final word, uh, things you're looking into, uh, any uh, kind of undercurrent you know, that, that we should be aware of? Uh, you know, what, 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 what should uh, Nutanix be concerned about or people uh, that are looking at it? The, the, the one thing I would say that would be a, a kind of a risk factor if you are saying you're reporting into the financial markets and so on is, that, you know, as I said, they're really up against some of the world's largest organizations here. You know, there's a lot of very, very big companies with skin in the game. Uh, and you know, uh, it, it depends. They could flip and get much more aggressive. They could decide to go their own way. They could make strategic acquisitions. We saw HPE buying SimpliVity, and maybe that would be an interesting turn in the market. But I think they're set fair for quite a while now. I think they've become part of the, the data center landscape rather than the, the disruptor. I think they're now part of the, the status quo in a good way anyway. Yeah, uh, last, last year uh, they, they made, uh, you know, uh, it was one or two small software acquisitions. I, I think yeah. that's where we would expect uh, you know, Nutanix to make those by all right well, well Martin Veach, really appreciate you helping me Pleasure kick off. Uh, we've got two days of coverage here uh, at the Acropolis in Nice, France. Be sure to stay with us. Uh, have the executives on, customers, and the partners. I'm Stu Miniman, here with Martin. Thank you so much for watching theCUBE.